Hello my dear Wargamers, Red Strike, the first quick and dirty unboxing. The box is very heavy. The box is very heavy, 4 kilograms. It's tall. And it's about uh, World War Three that never happened in Central Europe 1989. What do we have? We have two dice with the 10 because a zero is a 10 and I preferred to have dice with 10 so no questions about is the zero a zero or a 10 no it's a 10 definitely these cards are one of my pet projects in the project they are optional nothing has been tested with these they may or may not break the game so use at your own risk some for the NATO and some for the Warsaw Pact. This is the scenario book, which also comes with the ex rules explanations. So, all of these silhouettes, they will be found also on the counters. Yes, all of these different models are there. The contents are the battles, the exercise scenarios, battle scenarios, four campaign scenarios, and a bunch of rules examples, and playthrough for the air, for the air war, for the ground war, some philosophy. <laughs> so, special thanks. I really have to thank all of these guys for all of their input they put in. Some more than others, but still very helpful indeed. And great thanks goes out to these guys. The exercise scenarios are meant to learn the game, mechanics really. They are not intended for competitive play at all. They are totally unbalanced and that's not what they are for. They are there for to learn the game. You will be introduced with ground ground movement and combat, missile combat, air air combat. This is the first scenario where you'll have a little bit of everything, except for naval units of course. Then we come to the belt up scenario with the uh, only naval forces. The North Sea has air units and naval forces. Again, Hunt for Red October is air units and naval units. Birds and Wolves is, is a rather big, big one. This one could be really played also as, as a real scenario. It's a nice one. With a lot of air units and naval units hunting across the North Atlantic. Northern Oil. It's about the installations, just to introduce them. And Reforger is a game, is a ground combat with helicopter units coming into the fray. Then come the battle scenarios. Battle scenarios are the, the real uh, heart of the game indeed. These are playable in a couple of, well, I would say one or two or three days if you had time to do that. They are the classical Fulda gap, of course. Berlin Blockade, that's where NATO attacks and wants to free Berlin, that has again be blocked, located by Warsaw Pact, the northern German plains. The classical one where the Warsaw Pact drives through the north German plains. Bavarian option, oh, not so often played, that's where the Czechs and the Russians try to seize Bavaria. Nice one too. Miami 1989. Which has nothing to do with Miami indeed. North North Atlantic. It's about uh, hiding your SSBNs, your ballistic missile submarines in the Arctic. Valkyrie's Embrace. This one is uh, about the Norwegian campaign. Then come the campaign scenarios. There are four of them. The first one is the is the smallest one indeed they all start we didn't start the fire they all start with the same setup what's different is the number of supply and the movements that can be made before the game really begins here this is really something like a strategic um, like a, a, a surprise attack from Warsaw Pact we didn't start the fire is more or less both have been um, uh, mobilized for a couple of days and land of confusion is really where they had a lot of time to 
uh, to mobilize and to go into their forward defensive or attacking positions. Two tribes, that's where NATO goes into the offensive, a big one. It's also uh, the, one of the largest ones. So land of confusion and two tribes are mainly the same games, but the initiative changes. And then we have the rules examples, all with a lot of graphics to describe what you do, with whom you do it, what all these things mean. All of the major rules are pretty much explained in this one. And there is also the ground playthrough. Only part of the first game turn just to show how this would work. And that's it. The rule book. Don't be afraid of rule books that go by 55 pages. There is an Elaborate index, as you can see. There is glossary. This is where you find where to find one. <laughs> um, the game has standard game rules that go for twenty. Go for the first to the forty pages are the standard rules. Then you will find advanced rules up to page 46 and 46 to 48 are optional rules. Also here a lot of graphics, well a lot, there are graphics. Aids. It's a booklet, they don't come in card form this time. The ground combat. Some flowcharts to explain visually how things should work. Transport mission also a detailed graphic on top of the text that goes in the world book. The missile table. Each of these missiles is represented in the game and each has its own specifications like range, what warheads they could have and what's the probability of hitting a target. Air units, NATO aircraft, also packed aircraft. All of these models are depicted. They are flown by these nations. That's the NATO name, the role, what are the features of each air unit, air model, What's the rockets, the missiles they use, movement allowance, bombardment ratings, all the ratings are also depicted here. They are also encountered, of course, but also here. Markers explanation, supply is coming in convoys and uh, by lines of communication for the Warsaw Pact. Detection tables for the standard game and on the bottom here comes the standard table, uh, the advanced game detection tables, range characteristic summary for the advanced game and for NATO. So each and every air unit has its own detection capabilities of air units, surface units, subs, Nimrod MR2 has quite a, a good range of detecting submarines and counters explanations. These are used to record the hits on ADNs, so you always need only one for the game. There are more, so you have more copies if you want to play the game more, I, I hope so. so. By Air Defense Network, you can see the different installations. Of course, there were many more. Um, I have regrouped them, uh, of course, to make it more playable and still make it uh, a target. And each time you hit, for example, the SOC berthing in Hex 1115, each hit will be ticked off here. 
if fourth ATF has taken eight hits, which will be recorded here, it is going to be limited and it's going to be out of service if it has taken 12 hits. And you see, you don't have to kill everybody to make a, to make an anti ADN limited operational or uh, out of service. Same counts for Warsaw Pact. Some explanations on what this means. So this one comes really handy. This is the Air Naval Combat Resolution Track. And I really love this one. Because each time you are somewhere on the map, you don't have to go back to some table and to find out what are the number of hits that you have taken. And this one, is, it's movable, so you can put it wherever you are just right now, um, resolving battles. This is, thanks Vuka, this is, I think, perfect. Game, game turn track and the sequence of play for one game turn. A couple of explanations come with it. It's only, this is only the basic one. There is an, uh, an explicit one in the game book. End stage, death contract. How many movements, naval movements was a pack tornado can do? Who has the initiative and what's the weather? These are the general tracks for air recce, special forces missions, transport capacity, railroad capacity, world opinion, number of battles won, supply points, victory points. So these two tracks are really important and they will be used a lot in the game. Is a recall of the of this one, but as I said, this one is not this one. You have to put somewhere and use it a lot. So, but this one is movable, so you can take it wherever you like it to to be. You need it. The maps, as you can see, they have become much greener than they were in the playtest version. I hope everybody is agreeing that this is much, much nicer. Air bases, cities, airports, major river, small river, coastal hexes, ports, air zones, Railroads, roads, everything is standing out and really good to see. It's really a great job done on, on visibility. This is part of the operational map. It comes in two paper mats. It's a nice finish. It has this wax feeling finish. Looks like even drinks can spill over it and you still can use it. Just wipe it off. This is the northern part of the operational map with sea zones that can be mined. You will record the mine level here. Then there are these smaller maps that come really small, well really, they are smaller than the operation map. So these maps are destined to be played for the battle scenarios, the B1 Fulda Gap battle for example. You have everything on this map, all the air bases, everything is on this map that you need to use to play. So for those of you that have not so much space but still want to play the system, explore the system, this is the way to go. There are six of these. The strat map that can be used... Oh, I like this feel. The strat map that can be used for standalone games, mainly, well, only naval and air units and also in the campaign games and the advanced games if you like to. It's really optional to use these. Bavarian option map. Even smaller. I think that's the smallest scenario, battle scenario. This shows you two of the exercise scenario maps. Very small ones, but again, not for competitive play. Another exercise map. Without terrain, with terrain, movement and combat can be can be trained here and here. One more, two more. These are the airbase displays. So when you don't play a battle scenario. In the campaign scenarios you need these to put your air units on. The air units are all the way only on the operational or strategic maps while they are flying missions, so only up to six counters per side will ever be on the operational map chasing each other. All the rest will be here. They will be stationed, for example, on this airbase. 
This airbase is in Germany. This airbase is in Sweden. Capacity of the airbase, anti-air rating of the airbase. This is the nation that can land and start emissions from there. Here you have, for example, an airbase that's in Germany. You see the German flag behind here. But it's operated by the British Air Force. So only British air units may take, may make missions from here. Then you have two columns, one for interceptors, one for offensive missions. And you have free sorties for NATO units, for example, they can do free sorties in the game, uh, game turn. Warsaw Pact forces are a little bit more limited and have only two. Hello. Then we have the setup sheets to make it easier to set up the game. There is a lot of them. Don't be afraid. It's to make to help you. So as you can see, there are also the reinforcements are on these, so you can prepare the game really well. For example, the first campaign we played with proper ne, with proper preparation, you can set up the game. Two people, me and uh, Thierry, we set up the game in, in about three hours. So a total campaign. It was the smallest campaign, okay, but we also set up the first three turns of reinforcements. And then we have the counters. These are the counters. There's a bunch of them. 24, I think 24 sheets. 24 sheets, yes. Front and back. Easy punchable. And they have all kinds of nations around them. They always have the nation flag. French, German, American, you know, the British, the Netherlands. Silhouettes demark armor heavy units. Armored and mechanized units normally have these tanks. These tanks are the real tanks that are that were the main tanks used by the these units. Helicopters. Infantry units are all also there. Not a lot of headquarters. Control markers, Mi 24 Heinz from the First Guards Tank Army. This is the headquarter of the First Guards Tank Army uh, and command of the Western Front, for example. That's it, man.